What's the word, you two? What's the word, you this? What's the... Hold on. <laughs> Fuck I'm smiling for, man. Look. What's the word, you two? What's the word, you this? What's the word, you this? What's the word, you... What's going on, man? Hey, man, today, man, check me out, bro. Now, look, hey, we actually got... Now, somebody came out DM yesterday, bro. Somebody said, I should watch World's Deadliest Game, Mind Grill, Mob. Let's get straight to it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm curious. Let's see what's going on, bro. Uh, it's from 2002, so I want to see what the hell was going on, you know what I'm saying, in the 2000, man. Like, like what y'all niggas had going on, man? Let's get straight to it. Uh, shout out to Ashley. He said he didn't want a shout out, so I ain't even gonna do it. Let's get straight to it, though. Tonight on the world's deadliest gangs, we take a trip to a calmer, more tranquil place. A country of warm and friendly people, a nation that thrives on discipline. The country is New Zealand, surely the world's safest place. In tonight's show... I ain't gonna lie, bro. First thing first, I don't think there's no such thing. I know he obviously being sarcastic, but it's definitely no such thing as safest place. And for y'all niggas that's overseas thinking that... Your country might be the only country that get like that or that has violence or whatever. I promise you, you wrong, bro. I don't care where you from, what city you think you from, whatever. Anywhere you at, bro, if you if you look for whatever you're looking for, you can find it. You know what I'm saying? That plot, anything. If you if you if you want to be a winner in life, and wherever city you at, and if you if you look, if you look for winning opportunities, you're gonna find your winning options. You know what I'm saying? If you looking for if you looking for problems, you are gonna find that shit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you looking for, you looking for some females, you are gonna find them. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you at. You gonna damn near find that shit wherever you all care where you from. The gang who record their acts of terror on camera. Gang warfare. Mongrel mob versus black power. But first, the mob in action. New Zealand is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Rolling hills, snow-capped mountains, spectacular coastline, and sheep. New Zealand is notorious for its gang violence. It has a higher percentage of gang members than any other country in the world. New Zealand has the highest, uh, the highest gang, like, culture in the world, bro. I did not know that, bro. That's crazy. I did not know that y'all was, like, number one for all that, you know what I'm saying? I did not know that, bro. That's crazy. There's more gang members than there are policemen. Police say they are close to losing control of the gang problem in New Zealand. The gang violence is spilling over onto the streets. Tension in the city was so volatile they were safer in the cells. Handguns or uh, cut down weapons, uh, throwing Molotov cocktails. Uh... The most notorious gang of them all is the mongrel mob. But that's the thing about it, but y'all gangs be like organized as Y'all gangs be like, bro, he literally got on the whole vest right now saying Mighty Mongrel Mob Roche. So like when y'all go to jail and they be having y'all strip y'all sales, y'all be having them, I be seeing y'all be having them big ass tattoos on y'all back, bro, and they look just like this, but they be tatted on y'all. Is it like any repercussions with that, bro? Like, I don't think it's niggas out here with like, the most I, the most people I think people can do is like bandanas, you know what I'm saying? Colors like that. Unless it's something going on I wouldn't know about, but I ain't never really seen nobody just, uh, unless it's like a custom made shirt sometimes, I ain't never seen nobody like have a whole vest. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be like 30 deep, same vest, like dinner looking like a biker game for real. The hard, evil people. You're a person stomped to death. Absolutely yeah. horrific. They gang raped his wife in front of him. We're just too crazy, and we've got evil minds. Maori based gangs started to emerge in the Hawkesbury area. Back in the early 70s, a magistrate of the court lined a few of them up who were facing misdemeanors and told them that they were nothing but a bunch of mongrels. 
the name stuck and the mongrel mob was born. Oh, so that's where mongrel comes from? Let me see, I wouldn't listen. Mongrel comes from... Merge in the Hawkesbury area. Back in the early 70s, a magistrate of the court lined a few of them up who were facing misdemeanors and told them that they were nothing but a bunch of mongrels. Oh, OK, so mongrels... The name stuck the and the mongrel mob was born. Mongrels. Okay. I was at a rock concert in 1971. It was the first time I'd ever heard the phrase mongrel mob. It's one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. A fledgling group of mobsters turned on the crowd and violence erupted. Man, I could, didn't know where these guys had come from. They were bottling people in the face. And, I mean, just it was awful, you know. I mean, it, it just, people were running to get away from it. Over the years, the gang grew, based around the large Maori families. I was brought up with Mongol mob, family were Mongol mob, extended family were Mongol mob. You're now down three, sometimes four generations of... Honestly, women would rather be alone than be with an unattractive man. Things that I find pretty unattractive in a man would have to be when he's not very bold and he's kind of just very unsure of himself. Uh, all he does is drink booze and eat Doritos. Um, he doesn't really have anything together in his life, and he kind of just seems like a low life. He Snapchats me all the time. I'm never even tries to spark up a convo, and he doesn't even know how to use MBT. See, if he actually used MBT, he could pro- MBT? slide into my DMs and my text messages right away without a problem. Here's the thing, none of you guys really know MBT, but you're gonna have to learn it and here's why. The only way- I don't gotta learn shit, bitch. I already know whatever she was talking about. Whatever she was gonna say, I already know. You know what I'm saying? Fuck what she was talking about. Hey look, if y'all want advice and uh, that world, I can make videos like that, bro. Everything she was gonna say, guess what? I promise you it was getting told from her by a uh, 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 man, you know what I'm saying? It was getting told from her by a nigga. You know what I'm saying? She, and look, if y'all know her, I'm saying bitch, but I ain't saying bitch and like, you know what I'm saying, that way. But fuck what she was talking about though, bruh. Feel me? Back to the video, man. People who are deeply immersed in the mongrel mob. The mob's reputation grew as a lawless gang that wanted to be hated. We're gonna go and get money somewhere else. They wanted the to be hated. The way we and it's crime. Simple as that. Give it or we take it. They don't really respect authority, even within themselves. They're like anarchists. The mongrel mob um, exists outside society. It's all about fear, it's all about fighting, it's about rape. So y'all, so this mongrel mob gang wasn't invented to like, defend themselves against nobody. It was just a group of people that was, that had misdemeanors and then some officers or something called them, oh, y'all just a bunch of mongrels. And then they ran with it, and then they mongrel mob, and they started just being violent and shit. Now, is this the whole truth? Because if it is the truth, I ain't a lot of y'all, I don't even respect that for for like, 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 I don't respect that shit for real, you know what I'm saying? That shit damn near just dumb, honestly. I ain't gonna lie. Now, I ain't saying I don't respect who in the game now and everything, but if that's where the roots is from, I damn near can't say I respect it. It just seemed like, you know what I'm saying, damn near just just dumb but i can't just run with that because this video might not be all the way accurate maybe it was because you know i think it's a gang i don't know which gang it is in the u.s but it's some gang that was created like it was either the bloods or the crips i look i don't want to say the wrong thing but i think it's one of them that was created to defend themselves against the police i want to say and then the other one was created against that one you know what i'm saying but if this gang was created just because they was getting in trouble. And then they just started being on random innocent people. As a man, I can't respect that. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? But let me know in the comments if I'm like, if it's something that they like miss, if I, they let me miss out on. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, I feel like a lot of niggas wouldn't even respect that neither though. So that's why I feel like that can't be. Because for y'all to like join these games, right? And then like stand so heavy on what it mean. I feel like that can't be how it was invented. So it has to be some type of deeper behind it. Maybe y'all was doing this against the British that came and did y'all. Because I just found out yesterday, bro. You no, know, two days ago that the British, they did everybody dirty. They did y'all dirty. They did us, us dirty. Bro, I ain't know the British was like out here 
bullying countries like this, bro. They bullied y'all, bro. And y'all still don't got y'all land back. You know what I'm saying? So if it was them that y'all was ganging up to defend ourselves against, hey, <laughs> salute, 100% respect it. But if it's just the hurt innocent people, I can't respect those. And I expect y'all to, you know what I'm saying, feel the same way that I feel because I can't respect them. You know I'm saying? I'm being 100 To increase the fear factor, they took the traditional Maori tattoo one stage further. There's not many people looking around looking like me. But I do because I love the mob. We often think, you know, what's going to happen with these guys? That's what I'm saying. You see how, you see how much he loved the mob? He literally got eye bags tatted up all, all over his eyes. So I feel like this love for this mob, for the mob that they got, it has to have some type of, like, morals and, 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 and real, like, ethics behind it. The grandfather's Ain't no way all these men just his join it just to yeah. He's got fuck the world on his tattooed on his neck. Although predominantly a Maori gang, anyone is able to join, as long as they can prove their allegiance to the mob. To join the gang, you must first become a prospect and gain the trust of senior members. The kids don't have any choice. They will do the time. They'll go to jail if they are instructed to do so by the senior members of the gang. I mean, you probably get a hundred stories on young prospectors that had given to the gang. You know, fuck, couldn't handle it. In fact, they just bashed us. And several people walk around who have done life jail sentences for murders they didn't commit simply because they wanted to be in the gang. If you're willing to do 10 or 11 oh, years for real. a gang patch, there's very little that the police can do. That was a little years. ass case, bro. Damn. He had the duck to get out, bro. For a gang patch, there's very little that the police can do. And once you become a full member, only then can you wear the notorious mongrel mob patch. He becomes a passion um, for what he's wearing and what he believes in. You've got to have that patch on your back. Yeah, you've got to have that patch. Once in the gang, they expect total devotion. The drug dealer who had ripped the mongrel mob off was made to pay by the mob and the police, they couldn't figure out who had actually done the killing, so they arrested all 18 mongrel mob members that had been there. No matter how much they leaned on them, they couldn't find anyone to sort of admit to it. 18. That's 100, bro, I ain't gonna lie. That's live, though. They say they found 18, they found 18, they, 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 they took into custody 18 people and then nobody said nothing. Like, they couldn't find no information. That's live, bro. Shout out New Zealand. That's real. Members go to, go to prison rather than inform on one member. It shows some solidarity. Once you get in it, there's no getting out. The mob is everything. The individual doesn't count. Put them in the gang context. Fired up with a little bit of alcohol and they're capable of anything. When you're a, in a gang situation, nobody can say stop. Why are they getting these close up on these niggas' lips, for, bro? Like, why are they doing that, bro? What was going on back in these days, bro? <laughs> say what up, Trey? This nigga chill out of camera, bro. <laughs> say what up? Are you trying to go say something to these niggas real quick? <laughs> say what up, bro? Pop your shit real quick. It was cracking, it was cracking, it was cracking. What's happening? What we reacting to? Where was deadly as gangs, y'all was cracking everybody. Here. No, we come, we exposing this bitch. Uh, Tomorrow I got a big event coming up, so yeah. that's what I was over there thugging out. You feel me? Uh, damn, I ain't been on this bitch in my cool little minute. God damn. Yeah. Real deadly as gang. Why the fuck you talking about them zoning in on their lips? At? What the fuck is this? Is that a forehead? Look, look at how they was zoning in on buddy lips right here. Hold on, let me show you. Look like a forehead. Look, right here, look, in a gang right situation, nobody can say you know stop. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, though. Look, though, y'all. My nigga, my, nigga, my nigga got a big ass, a big day tomorrow. Um, I don't know if he told y'all. I couldn't really hear. I got these headphones on, but I ain't going to say it. He ain't say what it is, but it's a big day tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So he over here, you know what I'm saying, getting some things done and shit. But let's get back to this video, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? These niggas, these, these, these niggas zoning in on bro lips and stuff, man. This has led to some horrific crimes being committed. Damn. One of the worst was a nine hour rape at Ambry Park. Nine hour a rape? Of convention. A woman got gang raped there and treated. Bro, what is my. I don't mean to keep pausing it, bro, but, bro, what are y'all gangs like doing, bro? This is a nine hour rape, bro. Rape? Nine hour rape. Like, it's about the gig. 
Bro, to a f like, what are y'all games really doing for real? I don't think I would respect this game, bro. Cause I know that might sound crazy, cause to y'all it's probably so. Cause when I think of games, bro, I think of like games is in niggas having to just they got no other option. They they defending themselves, bro. These niggas is raping motherfuckers for nine hours, bro. Killing people for what? Nine hour rape, but how? That, that's necessary to who, bro? Is was she like? Was she one of their opponents or something? You know what I'm saying? What? There's a man called my convention. A woman got gang raped there and treated shockingly. They violated her with bottles urinated on her. Urinated on her too? Son. What did she do? The gang had taken photographs of their terrifying crime, but left the camera at the scene. And this was used to convict eight mob members of gang rape. But incredibly, members of the mob seemed unrepentant at their fellow mobsters' actions. She didn't get brought on the path, she walked onto the path. And if that's the case, well, I think she deserved what if she got for being on there. Despite being hated and despised by the New Zealand public. Okay, so he just said she deserved what she got. I couldn't really hear that nigga, but apparently she deserved what she got. I, I need I need to hear both sides of the story, but that's why I, I don't really like watching like TV shows, bro. They don't be telling you like for, in black and white, but they be like talking in a little commentator voice and just, you know what I'm saying? The mob go from strength to strength. It's a very vicious lifestyle, and uh, I don't see it coming to an end here. I just see it growing. Damn. The country's not big enough to, to be messing with the mob. We're just too big and, and too crazy, and we've got evil minds. <laughs> Still to come, gang warfare, meet the mongrel mob's arch rivals. Gang style, facial tattoos and the mob's famous patch. But first, on the street. Porirua is unique in New Zealand as a town dominated by a single gang, the mongrel mob. Unhindered by competition from other gangs, it boasts the largest and most organized chapter in the country. There'd be hundreds, literally hundreds. They've all got friends, they've all got families. The Porirua mob is based around the Moki family. Their uncles, cousins, brothers are all in the mob. We went in search of the Porirua mongrel mob. Take the camera somewhere else, mate. Yo, yo. Hey, fuck, it's still me. Yeah. Tell your mate to fuck with Oh, shut up. They don't like you guys, do they? Detective Sergeant Bruce Jenkins and Mike Goose Craig work for the crime control unit of Porirua Police. I do anything so far as crime's concerned, um, especially if it's to make a dollar from misdemeanours, serious violence, aggravated robberies, using firearms and other weapons, homicides, intimidation. Them and their associates would make up a high proportion of offenders in the community. And they led us on our search for the mongrel mob. First, they took us to the notorious gang pad, where the mob normally congregate. This is their gang pad in here. You can't see a lot of it at the moment because of the um, fence that they've put up, obviously, to block the view. It's a surveillance camera. There was a homicide at this pad. One of their members had, had his throat cut by one of their associates. Oh, my God. With no sign of movement. This shit for real, for real. This shit for real, for real. He just said one of their own members had their throat cut by one of their associates, bro. So y'all take this shit like for real, for real. And then, you know, having your throat cut, that's not like somebody backdooring you. Having your throat cut is everybody know what you did wrong. So everybody probably vouched for it. And I mean, everybody damn near was, attended this shit, bro. This is like... God damn. And look, when I say I don't respect that, y'all y'all gang, don't have me come over to New Zealand, bro, and then y'all get on my ass, bro. You know what I'm saying? I say, from, from the information I'm getting from this video, it's 
putting y'all in a bad light to where I can't, I have no choice but as a man to not respect it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying I might be getting some wrong information. I might not be getting the full story on both sides. But from what I'm seeing, the way that they're portraying y'all might be propaganda, it might not be propaganda. But from what I'm hearing, I feel like. I'm right, damn near, for not respecting what I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all should damn near, if you was me, what would you do? You know what I'm saying? Take yourself out your eyes and your mind. You probably grew up in New Zealand your whole life, and you understand this game full in and out. I don't, I never been in New Zealand damn my life. You know what I'm saying? So think about it from how I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Because, look, I don't want no problems with not damn one of y'all. Y'all niggas got tattoos on all over y'all face. I'm cool, but y'all just cut y'all own nigga throat. Yeah, I'm chilling, bro. Mike tries to grab their attention and gets a prominent mob reply. It wouldn't be um, uncommon for a prospect or a, an associate to go up there and um, have four or five members, half a dozen members, um, hitting them with baseball bats and kicking the living daylights out of them. And soon we come across some prospects in the street. It's not uncommon um, for them to run up quite some quite serious um, bills known as tick with the gang for drugs and alcohol and then being forced to be going out and committing crimes in order to get the money to pay that back. But now the closest we're getting to the mongrel mob is one of their mascots. We've known of several incidents where they've stolen dogs and then tried to extort the owners to buy them back. Bruce knows the girlfriend of a mob member in this street. He goes to see if he can persuade her to talk to us. It's too dangerous for her to be seen talking, so she agrees to join us at the police station. Unfortunately, one of the mob members has warned her off, and she isn't willing to talk. I finished, I don't want to talk. Yeah. It's a shame, because I don't know what to say. Right. Undeterred, Bruce decides to go straight to the top and visits the president's house. This is his house up here, straight ahead. Sometimes it's approachable, sometimes it's not. Mm. But this shit is like serious, serious, and it's seriously organized, bro. This is crazy, bro. He's not home. Just when we think we're out of luck, Goose passes a familiar face. It's young Moki, isn't it? Yeah. The young guy is the son of the president of the mob, and he's a prospect for the gang. Hey, do you want to talk to these guys? Oh. Although he's willing to talk. Once again, it's not safe for him to be seen with us. So he joins us down at the police station, where he told us about the Porirua mongrel mob. It's one of the main gangs in New Zealand, Porirua, and it's got a bad history. My dad was one of Well, it ain't even no point for him to meet y'all down there and not be seen, because y'all got him all on television being seen, and y'all didn't even block his, blur his face out, so he, he definitely seen for it. It, ain't even no, it wasn't even no point in doing that. First ones to join, it's the staunchest mob around, and it's also one of the biggest. Yo, yo, yo. Sooner or later, one of the old fellas will just ask you if you want to prospect. Or you have to listen to what the president's got to say. You know, he'll tell you to grab and round up a few boys, round up a few cars in it. There's always 30 of us when we go out and do big hits. <laughs> And Mini Rapu tells us how he became a prospect for the gang. We wanted to get closer to the action, so we joined up with John from the uniform division. It's Porirua police policy to stop any car with a suspected mongrel mob member or associate on board. Andre, you don't want to, don't want to be filmed, Andre. Why not? From personal said his name. Uh, experience that I've got previous forms. Bro, how does y'all police feel about this, bro? Obviously, they don't like this shit, but how do, like, how, like, how do, how do they get away with this, bro? Like, I can't see this happening in America at all, bro. How does y'all, like, how is the laws over there, like, not on top of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, how, like how is this allowed to be so organized, bro? And then the fact that the police know what's going on, but it's still able to go on, like, how? How is that possible, bro? We agree. Assaults, aggravated assaults, and just, uh, just basically disorder and, and drinking offences. Oh, shut up. Every time we stop a car, it's just an intelligence gathering. It just builds up a big dossier of, uh, of the gang. 
um, basically one way of uh, keeping on top of who's around, just who's associating who, you know, other Mung Mo members from other chapters. It's such a regular occurrence for the mob being stopped that they have drawn up their own procedures. And before long, we come across another mobster. Are you part of the Mokis? Yeah. Yeah? What are you, a nephew to... Uh, son of Sid. Oh, Sid. Is this your car? Is it in your name? Good man. Just got it. Have you? Yeah. The guy we just stopped was... I, I've stopped him because I think he's... Uh, a member of the family that's involved in the Mungle mob. He's uh, related to the Moki boy that you interviewed earlier today. You know, if something happens later on, when we get the restoration of the car sometime, we can link it back to him and all his family that have been driving it. The mob is so sense. committed here that one member has legally changed his yeah. name to Mr L Mungle Mob Porirua. Although we'd met various members of the ruling mob family, we still hadn't encountered some of the senior yeah. members. Yeah, I could tell they seriously, seriously, seriously committed. It's like they, they, they full life, for real. I could definitely tell you. But then, just as we were going to call it a day, John spotted an old friend. He's a senior member of the Mungle Mob. He's a quite cool sergeant at arms who uh, controls a lot of the gang members and things like that. He's got a quite long record and it's probably going back to aggravated robberies, uh, rape, firearms and things like that. So we encountered one of the senior members and he gave us a traditional mongrel mob farewell. I ain't gonna lie, they seem, they seem real militant, bro. And then they saying that they only go out, every time they do a hit, they go 30 deep. These, hey, y'all definitely real, real organized and militant, man. How do y'all, how do y'all fund this shit? Like how, like, how do they get money, bro? How are they getting money, man? How are they getting money to even, and then the fact that the police is allowed to pull over anybody that they suspect is mongrel mob, and they allowed to just take the information down, so then if anything happened, they could just put pieces together on who owns this car and shit like that. I mean, they got to be on top of everything there because they definitely, they name and their face is in, the, is, is, is in the system too. And then they got their license plate number. So if they go anywhere and the license plate number get on camera, they already know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. So they got to be real organized and real. This is crazy, bro. I ain't know y'all was... I know y'all. I know y'all was y'all. Y'all was living like this over there in New Zealand. I know y'all niggas is just militant with y'all gangs and stuff, bro. This is crazy, bro. Yeah. Draw yourself to the break for the world's deadliest gang. How is he doing that on camera, bro? What the? F Welcome back to the world's deadliest gangs. Tonight, we're in the hands of the New Zealand-based mongrel mob. The mongrel mob have taken their roots from Maori culture, but they have adapted these traditions of love and peace. That's part one, y'all, I ain't gonna lie. This video really long as hell, and that's part one. Uh, and I, I would hate to watch it, and then y'all don't even like rock with the video. So let me know in the comments if I should watch part two. This is part one. Um, that's the end of part one. Part, and this is like halfway through, so the second video, the rest of the video got like eight minutes left. I don't know if I should watch the rest. Uh, this is crazy. I ain't know New Zealand. I ain't know y'all niggas just like this, this like well put together, well organized, well dangerous. Y'all niggas is over there like really, and then y'all flexing on y'all danger because y'all got big ass tattoos on y'all back. They go over y'all whole back, and then you got tattoos. Y'all really delicate. Y'all got tattoos all over your face. All over your eyes and your eyelids, in your eye, your tongue, under your lip, you know what I'm saying? Behind the ear, on the ear, probably on y'all genitals too. Be 100, bruh. I'm willing to bet money a couple of y'all got some My Girl Mob tattoos on y'all Johnson, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. That's like real dedication. Hey, uh, 
Let me know if I'm like mistaken with any information that they was telling me in this video, bro. I feel like at some parts they was definitely like, especially in the beginning, they was I think I think they was like trying to bash y'all niggas, make it look like y'all was bad, bro. It looked like y'all was doing this shit to innocent people. Let me know if that's wrong. And then why did it start? Cause one of the journalists said it started cause y'all was just y'all had misdemeanors and then they called y'all the mongers and that's how it came. But what was those misdemeanors for? You know what I'm saying? Like what was what was y'all like was y'all defending y'all selves or was it just oh y'all was bored had nothing else to do and y'all just wanted to start started to start start a gang and started like attacking people you know so let me know if y'all was just bad kids that just turned into like what it is now you know what I'm saying let me know if y'all if y'all do know I think the second part of this video is probably gonna talk about black power I'm not sure because I'm actually interested in that because that's black power niggas so I want to see you know what I'm saying black power niggas and how that even came a thing uh. <laughs> Hey, shout out Black Power niggas, bro. I just seen the video. I seen the video of them doing a the hockey. It was like all the Black Power nigga old heads. It was like six, seven old heads doing a, a front of Black Power niggas doing a hockey, bro. And the comments is hilarious. If you ain't see that video, go watch that, bro. Like, the comments was like bashing them because they was doing it with like no energy. Y'all was saying how they is dead. It's beyond their time. Hey, that's crazy. Hockey coming at 100K. It's my last time saying it because I don't want to keep reminding y'all, but I have to do a hockey at 100,000 subscribers, bro. I'm going to get Trill to do it. We might, we, might, we might go to New Zealand and then do it with some of y'all, bro. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all, two of y'all niggas. Hey, I'm going to make sure you like, share, comment. Bears coming every single day. I was going to man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey.